live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good morning. to see you this morning. We're waiting on some um, little live entertainment here. Good morning. We're glad to have all of you on today of all things Dr. Leo. And I'm thrilled about my guests that have taken the time at this early hour uh, to share with me none other than Miss Mrs. Joyce Garrett uh, of the Alfred Street Baptist Church and Mr. Theodore Thorpe the third of Alfred Street Baptist Church. Now they have an extensive career. Joyce leads and heads the music and arts department uh, at Alfred Street and has been there for some years and as an established uh, choral director in the school system and has retired and has just been, hey, good morning, Wanda. And Theodore is currently uh, assisting one of the music associates there at the church and I'm gonna allow them to share their positions uh, and currently what they do, but both great careers. So we're gonna start with a word of prayer and begin our questions today. And just again, I wanna express my deepest appreciation for both of you sharing with me today. So Lord, we thank you for this honor, this time and privilege, and we ask that you be in charge of this conversation and that it would not only bring glory to you as we know that we acknowledge you in all our ways that you direct our paths, but Father, that your people would be edified and blessed in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, Joyce and Theodore, let's share with uh, us your individual experiences about the call to church music ministry and uh, how you got to Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria. Uh, okay. I, started, I started playing for choirs when I was 12 years old in Kinston, North Carolina, where I'm from. And I went all through college, at Bennett College, always doing church music. DC, started working at a a Baptist church directing the choir. I've always I was doing a Southern Baptist. I was a and one day I was like, I'm getting a little draw the experience, and I learned something. I wanted that real uh, African American church. In 1979, wow. and I've been working in music. Right, had a fellowship. I had for directing, and I've been doing doing it ever since. Wow, that is awesome! That is awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome, Theodore. You want to share with us your experience? Absolutely. Um, I've grown up in church pretty much my whole entire life. My my father was a musician. My father was a conductor. My mother uh, grew up singing and actually sang at Carnegie Hall um, when she was in her 20s. So I've grown up in a very musical family, cousins, aunts, uh, uncles, and grown up in a, a very rich culture and tradition of uh, church music and worship. Uh, I graduated from Oakwood University, well, Oakwood College then in 2005-2006, and I left Oakwood uh, as a music major and came to the DMV that we call it, um, the D.C. area, and ironically, I don't know if you were Leo or if you remember Craigslist. Do we still have a Craigslist? I went on Craigslist, and I was looking for a uh, musical director position. Uh, and I saw online a group called the Washington Youth Choir, founded by Dr. Joyce Garrett. I didn't know who Joyce Garrett was at the time. And so I applied and um, interviewed and, you know, was fortunate enough to bless enough to, to get the position. And I didn't realize that Joyce was the actual founder of the Washington Youth Choir, which was an all-city choir that started out of Eastern High School Choir where Joyce had taught for 30 years. And then we made a connection and I believe Joyce got the call from Tommy Tyler, who's a good friend of ours. And um, Joyce can speak to that, but we kind of met that way. And she invited me uh, over her house. Uh, I remember it was during the summertime. And I think this was 2006 and we've been together ever since. Um, I've been serving at Alpha Street Baptist Church for going on 13 years now. Um, she knew me when I was a pup right out of college, 22-year-old. Didn't know 
nothing breath smelling right. like silver lac you know still <laughs> wet still wet behind the ears um and so we've been together ever since and i wouldn't trade it for the world that's fabulous it's a wonderful it's just wonderful i I'm, i've admired it uh and and admired joyce's work for down through the years down through the years joyce you were saying something you there you there yes i'm here Okay, I'm gonna go on. So tell us about the various aspects of the music ministry at Alfred Street. Choir, your choral units, your staff, recruitment process, management for multiple services. So just tell us how that works, Joyce, a little bit. It's a great church. Yeah, we have, we really, we really blessed to have music ministry, music worship arts kind of established. I can't take credit for it because we have five adult choirs. We have four SATB choirs, uh, one male chorus. Then we have a children's choir, a tween choir. Uh, this, this is like eight or seven. Then we have a teen choir, a handbell choir. We have a a orchestra of adults who have played in college and a, 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 a dance ministry with four a teen dance group, a young adult dance group, and a women's dance group. And then, of course, a drama department. So it's a very and a handbell choir. So they don't lead them out. <laughs> some arts ensembles that are doing well. All some people are directed, maybe two organizations Theodore and Warrior Priesthood. But wow. we have all age levels are involved. That is fabulous. How many, what would you say the total number of participants with all, everybody? I would say between three and 450 at least. Three or 450, yes. Uh, participate. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, that's amazing. So what are, tell them what are the and course Joyce, tell, tell us or dear, tell us about them. What are the core standards you deem necessary for a successful church music ministry? What are what are mm -hmm. some of the things that you feel that are just core standards? You want me to go or choice? Or? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Um, well, we, we have to, number one, have a heart for God and have a heart for people. Um, because the old saying is true, people are people. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we can lose sight of that. So I think those are the two two uh, primary uh, standards of having a heart for God uh, and having a heart for people. Um, the second thing is uh, having a desire to be excellent, uh, having a desire to um, to be excellent in all in all things that you do, uh, and that's pretty multi-layered as well. We could talk about that all day. Um, but I think when you operate um, with a heart for God, you're operating with a heart of humility, uh, with a heart of compassion, um, with a heart to do good. Um, and I think it starts from there. And then you uh, you take your, your marching orders from the leadership, your leadership, uh, this is what I learned from Joyce, leadership is everything. Uh, leadership is is what it takes to uh, to bring people along. You know, the saying is true. You know, people don't um, care how much you know unless they know how much you care. Yeah. And so that is developing a strong and thriving uh, music ministry. And then leadership has to be able to get along. Has to be able to respect one another. Have to. Get, you know, be able to understand that everybody brings something unique and important to the table. 
and we're stronger together than we are apart. Excellent. Yeah. Joseph, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I think uh, a core standard has to be commitment and people have to be accountable and dependable. <laughs> and you have to uh, establish, like T said, a culture easy and you don't do it overnight. It takes time, but that should be a, a core standard to bring your, to make a culture of you don't have such a difficult time getting people to come in and do what you want them to do, what right. they need to do. Right. Standards has to be your presentation, the mm. decorum of your presentation is into the excellence in the overall things that you do. So we emphasize uh, we emphasize uh, excellence in your uh, it's the people that actually came to rehearsal and rehearsed. Mm -hmm. You know, we those, those kind of standards that you're not just going to show up and exactly. sing, <laughs> right? I know you know all of this. Just, mm -hmm. It's just good to articulate and people to hear that it takes commitment. The underlying uh, underlying goal is foundation is commitment. You have to be committed. Yeah. And if you're committed to the kingdom, then what God has called you to is going to make it, you know, it's it just that much easier to drive. That's great. So that leads me to this question. How do you bridge the gap between generations, old school with new school? How do you bridge those gaps? Wow. Wow. Theodore, okay. Theodore, you can. Really? Oh, okay. Um, I think that's one of the most underrated questions. Yeah. Um, and the, probably the most poignant questions because it's probably what most churches are dealing with. Um, because we are experiencing, even from generation X, generation Y, millennials, we're experiencing a culture gap. And mm -hmm. we're constantly trying to bridge bridge that gap. Um, you know, speaking as a a um, Generation X, I never consider myself a millennial because I'm always like, if you grew up in high school and you had a cell phone, you're a millennial. Right. And I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get a beeper. I think right. back then it was called a pager. <laughs> you know, I'd be sitting at the right. dinner table trying to page myself, and nobody paging me. You know, uh, but. I say that to say that the culture when I was growing up um, was church all the time. Uh, your family was in church. You were in church with your parents, uh, whether you wanted to or not, because you didn't know any better at the time. And now looking back on it, mm -hmm. how I was raised, how I was brought up and to understand the culture of worship, to understand uh, the culture of singing hymns, the culture of understanding worship songs, um, and then applying that biblically to your own, you know, your own lifestyle um, is, is, is very, very important. I'm all, the Bible talks about it is the fool who does not seek wise counsel. And so I'm constantly seeking counsel from um, individuals who have gone through this before me. So I have conversations with Joyce all the time. You know, Leo, you and I talk from time to time, you know, individuals who are, who are much older and much wiser because of their life experiences. I think that's part of the gap that we have to close is that, you know, I think you get to a certain point where, you know, teenagers or young people probably think they know it all, but life will teach you. And as you get, and as pastor's always talking about, just keep living. And so, I, you know, I, I cherish those conversations that I have, um, you know, with my seasoned saints um, even in the choirs, because they can point out something even as a leader that you might have just missed because you haven't lived it yet. Mm -hmm. And right. so those, those things are invaluable. I, I'll kind of crystallize it this way. I'm always saying to the young people, because I, I, I teach the young adult choir at Alfred Street, but I also work with Trinity, which is uh, Joyce's choir. And I'm always saying to, to, to the young people, there's a dichotomy that exists in which um, the seasoned saints have to be inclusive, mm -hmm. but the younger saints have to be constructive. Mm -hmm. 
And both things need to happen in order for the ministry to grow. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to understand, for example, the, the seasoned saints have to also realize that they were right where we were 20, 30 years ago. Where were you when you found God? What were you doing? Everybody wasn't always saved their entire life. And the young people have to understand that there's a lot of wisdom that's gonna keep you from some pitfalls if you just stop and take the time to listen. And so the two can grow together. Um, and, it, and by doing so, you, you establish this word that we don't talk about a lot, but relationship. And then when you establish the relationship, you're willing to sacrifice for one another, be it old or young. And I think if um, more young people can um, step back and not realize that every question is not a criticism, um, I think that we will grow. And, and, it, and it's, it's very evident at Alfred Street because there's a family oriented atmosphere. People genuinely love each other with yes. the love of God. So that's, that's one of the beautiful things. Uh, I'd like to add to that. Um, to me, in different one service. So, uh, and I have, we believe in this. His choir sings like most songs you ever want to hear in the style with the chest voice and the host on occasion sing a spiritual with mm. using the choral mm -hmm. tone or they might sing an anthem a choir is singing with my choir my choir change kind of all those age related names so um we are singing a concert with his choir so we we have a choir with the youngest members and the choir with the oldest members because they, they are both choirs have some great joy that experience. It's been more challenging to get to sing with them, but, but one together, I think every, there's going to be great benefit from it. And that in one service, if I'm doing a big anthem with the organization might be a gospel song. So that's how you bridge together if you can. If it's possible. That's great. That's great, guys. That's that's really great. Uh, Apple Street's a great example of of that merge. It just it's seamless of the two generation of the generations it's a yep. generational church and very much involved everybody's involved yes well the one of the uh things that has helped us is that after howard john wesley yes he was the song and a lot of people thought, oh, we're getting ready to become this whole, whole total Pentecostal church. <laughs> he did it all. And he, he likes the as well. He'll stand up and uh, join in when they're singing. If if T sings a spiritual, if I sing a spiritual, it's fine. Congregation, you know, so the congregation to all genres of music. So that helps because the pastor he called we man. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Tell me this, where do you see church music shifting? Where do you see the music in the church shifting to? Um, it's actually I think it it shifted from traditional styles of worship. Um, you know, now you're con you you're constantly seeing um the praise team element. Um, 
and it's starting to, sh to come back. I know we personally have a campaign uh, in the DMV, a uh, good friend of mine uh, who started a campaign, Phil Carter, shout out, and Steve Key, about bringing back the choir. Mm -hmm. And the choir was a foundation of church music and worship. It played so many vital and important roles in the worship service, yeah. not just for the choir and the music ministry, but for the congregation. You know, I was reading an article um, the other day of, of nine reasons why people don't sing in church anymore or why congregants don't sing in church anymore. And I think it's it's important where we talk about bridging the gap between the younger generation and the older generation, not to lose the foundations and traditions of the church because all of this new music that's coming out has sprung out of the traditional uh, music of the church from choral anthems, spirituals. And we can't lose that because um, the church is not a monolithic group when it comes to sacred yeah. music. Right. And so you have uh, people from all generations with all different backgrounds, all different styles and all different preferences. And yeah. so you've got to be able to serve the entire meal um, to the congregation as long as you're right. doing it in an excellent manner. Um, the Holy Spirit will come in and break the yoke of the anointing and God will bless it and the people will be edified and God will be glorified. Um, but I think we've got to stop uh, with the mentality of, I've got to use this style to draw this crowd um, and allow um, for the understanding that God is the one who brings people in. The Holy Spirit is the one who changes lives. If your heart is in the right place and you're doing what God has required you to do, then that's his job. It's your job to, to, to um, operate in an excellent manner and to to bring the entire meal from the church music and worship perspective so that everybody gets fed. Right. Well, uh, I think if I was adamant about not having to the idea and so to keep from Letting our eyes in front of everybody at every service at microphones. What we do is for praise and worship, we let the choir director lead it. The choir director for that Saturday, the choir of our rehearsal, we learn praise and worship music here. We lead that each week. And we only have one praise, the teacher, young adult service they have on the first Wednesday of every month called Kaya, Come As You Are. So we have a Come As You Are praise on horses. But our praise team members, most of them in another choir. Okay, that's awesome. That is that's that's great. Thank you for your responses, guys. Stephen Key just sent up. He said, "Thanks for the plug." The next bring back the choir session is October twenty seventh. So he wanted to plug that so that everybody would know that. Let's move right along. So, how can we maintain musical excellence within our church worship settings? And people, we know that uh, Alfred Street is a large, is an anomaly by itself. Just a large setting where. It, all, it almost runs by itself, that people know the expectation, but how can we maintain musical excellence within our church music uh, worship settings? What are your thoughts on that? Theodore, you wanna start? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, yeah it's, um, you talked about, you talked about uh, excellence, uh, excellence kind of being multi-layer. Multi and I, I, was and recently I was recently having a discussion with, an individual, a discussion with an individual talking about excellence. Talking about excellence being both a positive and positive probably a negative. negative. And it kind of flipped it on me, because, flipped it on me because when you're talking about excellence, talking about excellence most, you know, most church music, you know, church music, music, music they want to have a vibrant, to have a vibrant uh, thriving, uh, thriving yeah, music ministry. But the question is, at what expense? And, what expense? and, and um, what is the motive uh, behind, behind excellence? excellence? Um, 
Um, a good friend of mine, Jason Fred of mine, Jason Fred of mine, Michelangelo, 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 that's driving after X, driving after X, driving after perfection, driving after God. Driving after God. Right. But you have to but strive have after God first. Right. Because if you're striving because after, you're striving after excellent, just for the standpoint, just for the standpoint of, reflecting of reflecting you as an individual, you as an individual then the motive is wrong. The motive is wrong. If you're following and you're seeking after, after God, then your excellence, your excellence comes, out of, comes will out of a will to please him. To please him. It like totally it like totally flipped my understanding, flipped my understanding of it. Of it. Um, uh, from the standpoint the of standpoint just excellence, of just on, excellence its own, on its own, never settling never for past achievements. A lot of times lot in times education, education, I'm always talking I'm about, about growth growth and learning and learning over accolades and achievements because measuring measuring success you really have to walk that and the leadership the leadership from the pastor wanting to wanting us to operate in a manner of excellence but that means studying to show yourself the truth so that when you so that are when relaying you these, are principles relaying these principles of excellence, it's coming from a motive, a motive that we are here, we are here to, worship. to worship. That's why we were created. That's why we were created. As opposed to As we're, opposed doing to we're doing this so that we look so good, we look good and we put on a good face. face. And it's superficial. And it's superficial. But if you, right. me in the but street, you stop me in the street, I'm not the same person. I'm not the same person. Right. So, so uh, it's, uh, it's, it's making it's, sure that we find that balance because that balance if we can't connect, can't connect as people, as, people, as, Christians, as Christians first, first, then our pursuit, then of, excellence our pursuit of excellence is in vain. Is in vain. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's a huge that's thing and that we that possibly we talk about it out. We may disagree, we may disagree but, what but, but what brings us back together at the end of the day is that we're people of God. People of God. Yes, and we're Christians and first. We're Christians first. That's the foundation. That's it, mm -hmm. right? Excellent, Joyce. You have anything you want? Yeah, yeah. You know, the Glenn, Glenn, Eric, Eric saying, "Who ever stands this So it is a. It is a. The strive after. Excellent. Excellent. Because God is perfection. God is perfection. So, right. So, uh, uh, and I think, and I think, inspire, inspire the, the people in the, 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 uh, Theodore and Joyce about the foundation being laid with our relationship with Jesus Christ. So where have, where, where have mm -hmm. we failed? Uh -huh. um, where do you see us failing or where we can improve? Joyce, you want to start? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess we guess fail. It's not, fail. It's, not it's not easy. It's not easy. Easy. You're Easy. working. With you're working with there. So you're asking so you're somebody, asking somebody to, to come, come to a week, two week, two week, week hours two at, week your hours at your rehearsal. So, so themselves, why wow. that? You have to motivate people to do that. It's not it's uh, always been always been five members of church folks that do something every week. That's really the rehearsal tomorrow, and we need you to stay, you to stay another quarter of an hour. They would stay, they, they, they do it, do it. With a lot, without a whole lot of time, they are practiced. So, they have to work on the logistics. Uh, I think it's all where you approach it and the way you want to be. Uh, 
Uh, Theodore? Uh, I definitely would agree uh, with that. Um, um, we're always talking about not necessarily how you play, but how you play. Mm -hmm. um, like um, you said, every question is not a criticism. Not a criticism. <laughs> and people are people. And people so are people. So well, maybe a legitimate question from your congregants or from your choir members for members clarification. clarification. Mm -hmm. Being clear, Being clear is, clear is, is so, important. so important. Because you, mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. yeah, I can follow that. I can follow that, I can follow that direction. Follow that direction. Um, I'm particularly I'm talking, talking to talking young to people people where the Bible says, what do I offer to God that doesn't cost me anything? That's it. So there has to be a sacrifice. And it's not out of convenience. You know, I give you a classic example. If your choir shows up in bulk for Easter Sunday, but you can't find them, for to show up for a funeral or to show up for, show up for <laughs> a service. <laughs> that 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 right. So, right. So, for example, I'll for say example, to a I'll section say to leader, a section leader, a section leader, rather, a section leader rather, they'll say, they'll say, such and such, such, such is not going to be here yeah. on Sunday. And a lot of times I say, a lot of times I say, well, that doesn't really well, help that doesn't me. Really help me why don't you try to Why do don't you this? try to do this? There's a section of about section 30 of you. about 30 of you. Why don't you talk, to, don't each you talk to each other? And say to one another, to one another well, I know I can't, well, I know be, I here can't be here this weekend because this I'm not X, Y, and Z. If you can cover me, cover me, I'll cover you when you're not here. And that way, did we lose Theodore? Did you lose me? Hello? Hello? Theodore, did we lose you? I'm oh, here. Wow. Hello? Did we lose Theodore? Can you hear me? Okay. I think we lost Theodore. That was good. Joyce, you there? Oh, wow. Okay. Well, we we are grateful for this time that uh, Joyce and Theodore, Theodore Thorpe III and Joyce Garrett who serve at uh, the, the uh, Alfred Street Baptist Church of Alexandria, Virginia. And we just wanna leave this closing thought with you that excellence is achievable, it's doable, but you have to have the foundation of Jesus Christ at that. And that's and when we say the foundation, that's it. As leaders, we have to be in relationship with him in order to get receive our direction, to receive marching orders and how to lead people. And uh, I wanna thank you for viewing with us and we will close in a word of prayer. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the wonderful conversation with uh, our dear friends, Joyce uh, Garrett and Theodore Thorpe. Continue to bless us, can bless all of our viewers, continue to uh, do what you do in our lives and we'll forever give your name, the praise and glory in Jesus name, amen. Don't forget, we have a couple of things coming up. The Rome Choral Festival, July 2019. Those that would like to sign up, RomeChoralFestival at gmail.com. Also, uh, Theodore, you're there. Yeah, I'm back. I think I lost Joyce. But, I uh, wait, uh, I think I lost Joyce. But Theodore, I was closing up. Let, okay. let me get this last question in, Theodore. Tell me this, how important is musical diversity still within the church? Why, how is that, is there, is it, is there a need for it? We see how it's the, the change, the shift, but is there a need for musical diversity? And then when we say musical diversity, let's, let's break that down. Yeah, I think there's a need for diversity. Um, um, in the church, as I said before, the church is now, I can't, it's real stagnant. It's stag, yeah, it's okay. Okay, not there, yeah. Okay, okay. I was saying, I was saying, it's not a music, it's a music. So, you have to have a different kind of music. 
My computer went out, but I'm back. Okay, here's the last question. Give us this. Okay. Tell, okay. tell us the, the need for, is there a need for musical diversity in the church, Joyce? Tell us, oh. tell us what you thought. Oh, oh definitely. 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 Uh, I believe in all genres uh, of music. Remember I said earlier, I said it's important that we have a little of everything in every if possible. You know, a good hymn. A nice spiritual, nice perhaps, spiritual some good perhaps, praise, some and, worship praise and worship music, music good old traditional gospel song, gospel song. And, then and then something from the last, from 10, the last 15, 15, 15, 15 years, something fresh on the radio now. The radio now. So if that's so possible. If that's possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And usually, yeah. and usually the musicians that we have now, these great musicians out here now, they can do it all. Yeah. Theodore, you want to? Absolutely. Yeah, I was just saying that. Yeah, I was just saying that. We have, um, have um, five about fire, and each one has their specialties, but has the ability to cross over. And that's one of the unique that's things about the music ministry. And so I'm, I think so I'm not worried about even though my choir, even though my choir contemporary gospel music. I'm definitely pulling I'm out definitely pulling out all anthems, anthems. Definitely pulling out spirituals because I think because it's because I think it's important for everybody out of everybody in our music industry to be musically to be literate. Musically literate experience. That's it. Great. That's good. So these are some of your pers you've already mentioned and covered some of your personal standards of excellence and execution. I can see that readily even on Saturday. I'm so impressed just watching the Saturday evening <laughs> broadcast and uh, streaming live when I can. So the work that's being done at Alfred Street. Uh, we want to thank, of course, the senior pastor, Howard John Wesley, Dr. Howard John Wesley, for his leadership and guidance. And uh, just both of you, I want to thank you for working as a team. Jo Joyce, your leadership uh, goes beyond. We just appreciate the work. I remember first meeting you I think Nolan Williams was having some, I can't remember, it was at Mount Gene oh, yeah. Baptist Church. Oh, yeah. You were teaching a theory class and I was just wild. I mean, she had <laughs> the lay people and lay It was a wonderful, wonderful story. I love, you know, I love teaching here. Oh, well, we could tell it. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. So, Leo, you know how I knew about you? I knew about you. I knew about you. There was a teacher that was the class you and this is the Boulevard. Yes. What was her name? Lula Hedgeman. Lula Hedgeman, Lula Hedgeman and I had such a similar career. Similar career. Our, our careers were parallel. That's, that's how I learned about that church. Just amazing. So now I want to, and we're going to end now. I know I've had the people. Tell us a little bit, Mal, that you've combined, you both combined so well your school careers with church, and you've been able to separate them. Tell mm -hmm. a little bit about the successes of each. I want to hear about Joyce at Eastern, and then I want you, Theodore, to share, share about your school choir. Well, I just from well, had this wonderful had choir this wonderful for years, for years, years Eastern, 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 Eastern High School, and we were the, like the we choir, were like the choir, 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 choir stars that came to town. So we stayed with Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross and everybody that came to town. And they were on Christmas in Washington, Kennedy, and Honors every year. And when I saw the skills of Theodore Thorpe and Patrick Landy, we poured them in. And we were a team. So because Christmas in Washington, you have a week and a half to learn all that music and memorize. And we just would come together. We would play, I would direct, try to teach the sections, then we would divide, divide I, have some, I would have some, I would have some, and we got the work got done, the work and, and we hope that we, we, hope that we continue to do some to big projects in, in the future. Oh, that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was just it was just humorous. Um, because um, the first one goes, I mean, she just has she a mother Personality, so, personality so my mom away from mom home. Away from home. So it's just been so it's just been fab for these thirteen years. Thirteen years, like, years. like an older brother like to me. Older brother to me. And we've just been a team. We've just been a team ever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part um, of it is my temperament. temperament. Wow. Either, 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 really, really well. And we. Above all of that, we genuinely love each other. Love each other. 
Yeah. There's nothing I yeah, wouldn't do. Nothing I wouldn't do. There's, there's nothing I wouldn't disappoint. I wouldn't disappoint. Yeah. Ironically, yeah. we live. Ironically, we live. We all live. We all live. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So we're yeah. on the time. You know, over the time. You know, I'm just talking. Just talking. As far as um, as far as um, school is concerned. School is concerned. I'm literally I'm just following in, in the great huge footsteps huge of the Joyce Garrett. With Joyce Garrett. Uh, just celebrated, just celebrated um, Eastern High School reunion. Over thirty right, years of, that. Yes. of legacy. Of legacy. And the funny thing is, and the funny thing is, Joyce and I don't want to speak Joyce for her. I don't want to speak for her. her. When I was teaching, I wasn't thinking about it. When I was teaching, when I was teaching, he was just, he was just the passion of passion of, of, of working with. Of working with from all backgrounds, all backgrounds who didn't have and who didn't have and who the education kept education them kept them alive, alive. And I'm starting to experience, I'm starting to experience that going through year number going ten. Year number ten. Right. Right. That for many of these right. students, many of these students, music education music is a education is a just yeah. Yeah. to get yeah. them to. Get them a higher education. Higher education. For many of them, it is a nice experience. I have kids who say, I don't know what I would have been if I never been Yeah. I don't know what I would have done. So that's part of what keeps you going. And that's a different experience than church experience. Church experience. Yes, exactly. So in many ways, wearing different hats. Different hats. But it's growing but it's you growing as well. Right. right. That's teaching, right. They're teaching me, I would say more than I, I would say more than I would say. They tell me 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 they of uh, Alfred Street. Okay, we have okay, we uh, have uh, four four, four five directors of the church. Okay, they, the yeah. church supports, the church supports and, and uh, uh, a salary for, salary for the directors, directors for two bass for players, two, two drummers, drummers, the director, the handbell choir, choir, the, uh, the uh, drama director, drama director dance director. Dance director a, a music a coordinator music that handles the business, the business of the music and worship arts ministry. ministry. Wow. So, I have, an so I have an assistant that does all of the business, all of the business, all of the business turns requests and manages the budget. 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 We are really blessed. We are really we blessed. Really blessed. Really are. Um, and like I said, all, like of, I said, our all of our organizations are led by trained directors and are uh, some, uh, kind some kind of stipend or salary uh, for the work they do, the from the children's choir, and the children, and everyone. everyone. And that's how you get that's the commitment get and the dedication, and the dedication of the people. Of the, you know, they you feel know, that they their, feel their work that is bad, and so they give so it all they, they got. It all it's, they like, got. it's like when I we actually when I, had we a mid-year evaluation and end of year evaluation. And I have to evaluate everyone. And we have conferences and talk about it. And but there's never a year I actually was shouted from making my evaluation too glowing. But I said to the leadership, I said, but what do you do when you have a high performing people? They said, well, you still can't give everybody. Everybody can't be secure. Everybody can't be secure. To me, they are. To me, they are. It's, it's just, um, it's just um, a hard working. Hard working. It's, it's not real, not real competitive. competitive. It's just, uh, just uh, you just get a lot of educated lot of people, people that, have that have skills and resources and want to share and share and are doing it for the right, for the right reason. Yeah. And this and is what you get. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep the last question? This is so wonderful. I, I, you I can do this all day, Doc. How do you don't keep, the, compet <laughs> you don't keep <laughs> the competitiveness out of it? I mean, this is you see, you feel that. You, you, keep, the, you keep the 
You can, the Please. biggest thing we did thing to keep the competitiveness did. out of it was, of it was cross, 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 mem cross membership. Cross membership. So there are people so in my class that are also, in, are another also in another class. So now I can't so now be jealous of that class because that class, because class, is, part of me. class is part of me. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of singers that sing in two choirs or sing in three choirs. I mean, they come to rehearsal. They come to And that has that has been the big and also someone like T. All right, so you have a person you have the young person, the young person gospel choir. When he does music in my choir, that lessens competitiveness between us. And when I do music in the music choir, so that's how we've done it. Yes. Because I know I grew up in a situation where one choir sang, there's another choir that didn't put that choir. Right, right. But we don't, we really don't, we're not competitive. Because, you know, my philosophy is there's enough talent for everybody to have fun. So every question, we have what we need. Yes. Yeah, and I'm constantly in school. Yes. Yes. You know, a student, I'm a student of this class, and and it's I wouldn't say fortunate. I would say we're blessed, say we're blessed to have individuals have individual with unique with skills, unique skill, mm -hmm. but also but also temperaments. Temperaments. You know, we could talk all day we could about talk all day. Uh, you know, melancholy, melancholy, choleric, but, but like for example, I would say music ministry staff. We all see we all see as the queen bee, queen bee, and like we're the worker bees. Mm -hmm. But we mm -hmm. have um, um, unique personality. Personality. But they all mesh together. All mesh together. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly learning from a multi class. I'm constantly learning from a multi class. Yes. Possibly yes. Learn from the joke learn. I'm constantly learning from the small craggle. I can have conversation. conversation. You know, for hours talking about it. Just, 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 just learn from one another. You know, we have different personalities. It's great. Right. We never stop, never stop learning. And we have an appreciation for one another first. First. And that and that really helps us. That's awesome. Well, don't let me hold you anymore. We're over our time. You guys have shared so I could get so much more out of you. They're just great examples. Thank you for setting the precedent. Thank you for being the role models for us in church music everywhere. I've learned so much just this conversation as well, but I learn by your doing and what I see uh, when I tune in and stream. And I want to thank you, uh, Mrs. Garrett, for your leadership. Enjoy. Enjoy. And, and Theodore, just thank you so much for your support and all that you do for the mm -hmm. kingdom. So let's end in prayer. Uh, Joyce, you want to dismiss us in prayer? You mind? Okay. Father, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you for this opportunity to share what we know and what we've learned about serving you and your people in church and made and made to do your work in the right in the right. May the Holy Spirit guide us and may what we do what we do in your in your sight. Thank you. This is my prayer. My prayer, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks a lot, everyone. Amen. And as I was mentioning earlier, we've got the Rome Choral Festival tour, uh, Rome Choral Festival at gmail.com, Gregory Porter Christmas concert. That the VIP tickets are sold out. So, my goodness, uh, my goodness. Go online and do that. Awesome. And so, awesome. we just have some other things that are coming up, and we're excited about it. And look forward to next Friday. Thank you again, Joyce. All right. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.